Hey guys, today I am going to share a super important lesson to you guys. Never ever consign your cards. There was a store in Houston. It was a relatively popular store. My friend went there. He had another friend consign his magic collection. And one day the store up and left. So this is again a local game store and you would think that your local game store is safe, right? Because it's a physical location, but really it's not because it's run by people who are, hmm, how can I say this? They're very greedy. And if they're greedy, you can kind of figure out what I'm going to say next. They're out to make money and the easiest way to make money is straight up steal, right? There's no other better way to make money from a marginal standpoint than why why sell Funkos, why sell any of this shit, right? You can just straight up steal it. And that's what unfortunately happened to this older man. Uh, essentially, he had a lot of sports cards. He had some four Rolexes, which isn't a small amount of money. I think the Rolexes themselves, depending on their, I mean, I think that even the Air King is like $10,000. But, you know, depending on what type of Rolex is, a Rainbow Daytona is 200 k by itself, if not more. So, uh, what part of this was sports cards, what part of it was Rolex, we don't really know from the reporting. Once the local news reports on you, if you're a game store in a very negative way, you're done. I, I, can, I can tell you 100%, you ain't going to recover. There is no recovery, there is no hope or a better tomorrow, you are done. And the reason you're done is is very simple. Uh, now everyone knows who you are and how you have run your business and that you took this guy's cards and now he's getting the police involved. And the response is, you know, very slimy in my opinion. The response is like, oh, no, I'm not going to pay you back, but let me spend some money. Let me spend some money on uh, a lawyer so I don't need to pay you back. So let me spend some money on my lawyer. The reason you don't consign is more likely than not, um, unless you really know that individual, they're just going to straight up steal it because it's so easy money, right? Or they, they can justify in their head. So on my other channel, LUS, uh, which is the main channel now, this is come a secondary channel, uh, we talk about a guy who stole Rolexes on consignment. And he did exactly what this guy is doing here. Hey, you can sign with me. I'll sign your contract. I'll sign whatever you want. And now he's in jail. So this guy, the legend sports whatever guy could end up in jail because the guy I covered stole $5.6 million of watches. And now he's in jail for up to 40 years for a mail fraud. He actually pled guilty recently to two counts, each count being up to 20 years. Now, guilty plea probably means he'll do less than 40. So this is one guy, and it starts with one guy, because then now other people with consignment, so like this company obviously is doing consignment, right? It's unlikely that this is the only guy they consigned with that has consigned with them. There might be other people watching the news right now thinking, you know what, where the hell is my stuff, right? Um, that's probably the, probably the best conclusion is where the hell is my stuff, now I watch on the news, and that's exactly what happened with uh, the case. Uh, his name is Anthony Farrar, the timepiece gentleman, and uh, it's exactly what happened, man, except it's sports cards. Uh, actually, it's exactly the same because this guy's doing it with Rolexes too. And once one person said, hey, um, you know what? Um, what is happening here? Where is, you know, this guy is not, this guy is not getting paid, then... Uh, where is the rest of my money? Where is my money? What, where is my money, right? And that's uh, in a nutshell, man. Uh, this is, it's very common. It's very, very obvious that this is going to happen more as people need more and more money. Um, it, I mean, it, it's so obvious to me that like the way that uh, the the individual, Anthony Ferrari, the guy who's going to do up to 40 years in jail, which would cover extensively, the way that he got caught was on a blog. So he had social media. He posted about, oh, hey, the watch didn't sell. And then the the client asked him, hey, uh, can you return the watch? So when you ask to return the item, right, like when it's the item doesn't sell for a year or so on, 
uh, and then the client has to return the item, suddenly, immediately, that watch sells? Okay. And the other clients are saying, hey, I want my item returned back to me because, you know, you didn't sell it in this time period that was in our consignment agreement, and suddenly he runs out of money. So once you run out of the cash flow, you end up in a serious trouble because you cannot return the watches that you have already sold. Now, the client doesn't know you already sold a watch and you pocketed the money, but nonetheless, um, you have a, a very interesting development where now this is the first guy who's suing. So if there is a Ponzi scheme in, in the watch scenario, Anthony Farrard, it was a Ponzi scheme. He admitted to a Ponzi scheme. The FBI caught him then it all falls apart at this particular stage in time because um, what is happening is more people with consignments will, will go to the card shop and say, hey, I saw in the news you didn't pay this guy the 200000 that you wanted and you didn't return the items. What about my items? Are my items here? Can you return them to me? And of course, if you sold this dude's items and pocketed the money, it is very likely that you sold other people's items and also pocketed the money, right? Um, actually, I'll change it. Uh, <laughs> Anthony Farrar, uh, sports card, sports card Anthony Farrar. He lost $200,000 consigning cards and four Rolex to card Anthony Farrar. Uh, I don't know. Is that catchy? Is that catchy? I don't know. But it's the same idea. It all falls apart. When there's like a run to the bank, it's not actually the bank doesn't have money that it wise in trouble. It's the money is not liquid. So when there's a run to the bank here and everyone's worried about their consignment cards, this local game store could easily go belly up because maybe they took more than just this guy. If they're going to take their main... I mean, this is a pretty healthy, chunky customer, right? 200K four Rolexes and rest in cards, 200K is, uh, um, is a lot of money. I'm not going to lie. It's just F ton of money, guys. It is a F ton of money. So, again, will we see more of this? This, this kind of reminds me a little bit of Mark's cards, right? How they took everyone's grading fees and then didn't grade when the time came to grade all the money was gone because he went to his fam family he got himself working there making all almost six figures he got his brother working there almost making six figures he's got his wife working there he's got his brother's wife working there he's got his brother's wife's friend working there he's got his best friend working there and you wonder where all the money goes it went to effing salaries right and then i think you know let's see where this money goes like i clearly he doesn't have the cards or the money because he it would just be super simple to return the cards or to return the money that you sold the cards for. And you wouldn't need to hire a lawyer to do this because it would just be a really easy return. Hey, sorry, dude, we didn't sell your cards. Um, here are the cards back. We tried our best. Nah, man, he lawyered up. That means he don't got the cards. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. <laughs> guys.